All right, welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Elliot and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today we're gonna be answering questions and comments and following up on news and yeah, well, let's just jump right into it. This is the best time of the year to buy skis. There is just a tremendous surplus of skis available I think from shops and online retailers because I am seeing crazy, crazy deals and it's hard to figure out what ski to purchase. So I'm gonna answer a handful of questions today and help you guys out. I don't typically do this a ton during the winter, but you know, it's slower, there's no skis to review and I wanna give back to you guys. So without further ado, let's jump right into our questions and comments. Of course, this video is brought to you by our great members and we are gonna to try to prioritize channel members today because they're the ones keeping the lights on. They're the ones supporting this channel financially. And I wanna get back to them. So as I said, let's jump right into the questions and comments. The first comment comes from Anthony Alpha 4118 on the Destroying My Career Ranking Ski Brands video. He says, thanks for the spicy fun topic E. The Stance 96 22-23 is a most awesome and useful ski that I enjoy carving, sending up to a foot of powder, a true all mountain wonder in my opinion. Glad to see Atomic in the top tier. I just bought my first pair of Maverick 86C. I'm hoping it's a good winter non-powder daily. Yeah, that's like one of two Maverick widths I haven't tried. I daily the Maverick 88Ti, um, so it's hard for me to speak to it, but if it's, if the 86C is anything like the 88Ti, which it should be very similar to, I think you're gonna love it. Um, again, I try really hard to not talk too confidently about skis I haven't actually put on my feet, but the Maverick series, I have yet to ski on a Maverick I didn't like, and so I hope it's a tremendous ski for you. I feel like the Maverick series in general does a good job of carving, being really accurate, really responsive, but also giving you that horizon tick and giving you just a little bit of float when you need it off trail. So I hope you love your skis, and uh, oh, your comment on the stance. So I have a big update from Solomon. I got on the phone with the Solomon rep, Joe, and he is gonna send me a pair of stances. Now, I'm not sure if it's the Stance 90 or the Stance 96, but we're gonna trial out testing out some Salmon skis. He said, you know, initially when I talked to him, he said they weren't gonna be able to send me skis, and then I did a follow-up phone call with him, and, you know, I was just asking him, like, hey, I've tried all the QSTs, I've got access to those. What my audience really wants to know about is the stance. They want to know about the stance ski because there isn't a lot of coverage on it. It's kind of underplayed and undervalued. And most of my comments are asking about the stance and, and partially from you, Anthony. So they said, yeah, we actually are really hoping to get more eyes on the stance. We will send you a pair of stance 90s. Um, so again, the skis haven't arrived. I never count a ski until it actually shows up in the mail, but if he keeps his word and everything, I should be able to review the Solomon stances going to the air. So that was a big update. I know I made a comment in my other video and then like an hour after it went live, I talked to Joe on the phone and he was like, yeah, we can hook you up with some Solomon stances. So I'm very excited to be reviewing Solomon and adding that into my list. I really like Solomon skis and I was pretty upset that it wasn't gonna be in the lineup and I, I don't know, I'm, I'm really thrilled. We're gonna do a trial on the Stance 90, see where that goes, but I believe that I'm finally gonna get you guys that Stance review this year because I think from what I've heard, it has kind of a cult following and just on a surface level, it seems to be kind of in that same vein that the Maverick used to be. I think Maverick has kind of stepped out of the shadow of the Bent series, but in my opinion, my educated guess is it seems to be in a similar spot as the QST series versus the stance. But again, you've skied on them, I haven't, so you might know better than me. But I did wanna give you guys that news. I'm very excited to be reviewing more Solomons this winter. All right, the next comment comes from Roger Bradshaw, another channel member. They say, Elliot, great stuff. This was from the save big, cheapest ski video I did. Looks like I bought my QST 98s too early, although I got them for under $400. I had to add bindings and mounting, which will put me at about 570. Anyways, this is another deal. But did you buy your QST 98s too early at under $400? Um, No, not at all. You got Solomon QST 98s for under $400. That is a screaming deal. I think it's easy to look at deals and be like, oh, well I could have gotten my skis for $40 cheaper and I could have gotten my uh, bindings for $20 cheaper. And it's like, okay, but at the end of the day you had first pick of the sizes. I think you made the right move. You can always like 
you know, wait till the last minute, try to get the absolute bottom dollar best deal. But there's no guarantee they're gonna have the exact size you want or like the exact model that you want. I think it's better to just be like, okay, sure, I spent $50 more than the absolute bottom, but I got exactly the ski I wanted. And for $400, you're still paying, what is that, like two thirds of what the regular price is? I don't know, I think you got a great deal. I wouldn't lose sleep over it. <laughs> And the rest of their comment is just about uh, ski essentials deals. Okay, the next comment comes from Scott Pratico, 1315, another channel member. K2 gets slagged for building their skis in China, but I can have a quiver for the price of one Black Crow ski. P.S. I have bought, but hey, budgets be budgets. The 99 Ti is banger. I agree with that. The Reckoner is, the Reckoner is hilarious fun. Also agree. Most of this stuff is brand affinity. I hate Rosignol, not sure why. Probably because they are everywhere and there's a 98% chance that the guy who skied across my new Atris in the lift line was on a Rosie. Great video, by the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to like dig at people for wanting affordable skis. That makes total sense to me. Like I, I totally get it. That's a lot of why I promote buying skis in the off season so you can get a good deal. But I think when you're looking at overall value, you have to consider warranty because sometimes skis, you can just get a bad pair, you can get a faulty product, and whether or not that company stands behind the product is a tremendous value. I had a brand new pair of Atomic boots. They ran into each other in a weird way and the plastic broke, Atomic sent me another pair. So it's like, okay, yes, ski boots are expensive, but knowing that the company stands behind their product has value in and of itself. If you live in a perfect vacuum, in a perfect world, and nothing is ever gonna happen wrong with a ski, sure, go for it. And whatever you have to do to like afford skiing, I'm not, I'm the last person who will judge you on that. But I do think it's good to let people know like, hey, if you buy this product, just know that there's a risk that if something goes wrong, it will be hard to submit a warranty claim, or they might not stand behind the product, or if it matters to you where they're made, then that's a factor, right? Like a lot of people like, handcrafted made in America skis because they want to support the American economy. If that's not you, that's fine. I'm not judging you either way. I'm more just trying to let people know because that adds or subtracts value depending on who you are. For me, I try really hard to buy things ethically, um, things where they're not made in a sweatshop. It's almost impossible to entirely do, right? You have a cell phone, you got a camera, a laptop, whatever, but Areas where I can avoid it, I do. So I buy Patagonia clothing because they've made steps to make sure it's ethically made and also environmentally friendly. Uh, I believe Prana and a couple other brands. Where I can do it, I try to. It's, it's, it's impossible to be perfect, nobody is. But to me it matters, so that's why I share it. It's not like a way of shaming, it's just saying like, hey, this is something I look for and if you're like me, you'll wanna know this. But great point and you know, the budget thing is all too real. And I will say, as far as skiing on it goes, I really like the Mindbender 99Ti. Great comment, thank you. Okay, Normware says on my video, I'm not in bed with any of these companies, I don't sell them, I'm not a ski shop. So for your point, Ski Essentials is a retailer, I'm not. Yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> so you think that the only people who should be able to review Solomon skis are people who sell them? Do you understand how insane that sounds? you don't want a variety of reviewers with different ski styles and different opinions to give you an honest review. What do you what, what do you want here? You want only people who sell skis to make reviews? You want only Peter Glenn reviews? Um, and Ski Essentials does a darn good job, but what if Ski Essentials, oh, they're not big enough, so we only have backcountry videos, Evo videos, and Peter Glenn ski reviews. Is that really what you want? I don't know, I mean, I, I do this mostly as a labor of love. I love making these ski videos. I love feeling the nuances and the differences in skis and talking about that. Part of the reason I do this whole channel is like, my wife is sick of hearing me talk about skis and this is an outlet for me. But is that really what you want? You only want retailers to get skis to review? Just think about that for a minute. Is that really good for the health of the ski community? Is that really good for the health of like honest grassroots reviews? There's room for us all to exist and like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen someone advocate so heavily like, no, I only want people who sell me stuff to make these videos. <laughs> and like I said, Ski Essentials is the exception. They do a really good job, but um, the way you're thinking about this is a little backwards. Okay, Scully YouTube says, this is about as stupid as saying Volkswagens aren't good because you drove a base golf. 
You are better than this clickbait silliness on my rating ski brands. Well, first off, it's not that serious. <laughs> Just giving my impression of where skis stack up now. There's a lot of brands where it's like, I'd like to review more skis, but this is what it's based off of. Um, also, Volkswagen's a terrible example. We owned a Volkswagen Jetta diesel and it got recalled because it was like gaming the emission system. What a nightmare. And then I had to like put it into a shed basically to make sure that there were no issues because anytime we drove it, oh, you have this issue, you need to pay the $300 diagnostic fee. And then once you do that, then you need to do this. And they had all these standards that had to be up to snuff before you could trade it in. So, but you know, your the trade-in value isn't gonna change based on how much work you put into it. So literally I went out, uh, I bought a Toyota Matrix to replace my wife's Jetta, gave her the new Matrix, used Matrix, Made sure, you know, I got it taken care of and everything, inspected it, and had her drive the Toyota Matrix, and we literally put her Volkswagen into a barn in rural Vermont. We lived there for a little while, and just stored it there so we could get the trade-in. Volkswagen is such a bad example. Yes, that was such a nightmare, and that car had so many issues, it had so many computers that were overly complicated, repairs were expensive, and then we had the recall on top of it. Um, yeah, I will never buy another Volkswagen in my life. Uh, between my wife and I, there will never be a Volkswagen vehicle in that garage. That whole emission scandal that people have somehow forgotten about and the lack of reliability, the expenses to repair it, what a nightmare. I mean, we had young kids and we were like stranded for a while with no car because of some stupid computer system. Yeah, um, no, I, I agree. I did try a base model Jetta diesel and I will never <laughs> drive a Volkswagen again. And this is like one of my least clickbaity videos. I literally just say, I'm ranking ski brands. What, I rank them. What, what's the clickbait? <laughs> I didn't say ranking ski brands over a burning bridge. No, I, I rank the ski brands. Is that clickbaity? No, I just, <laughs> I was like, for right now where the skis stand, based on what I've tried, this is how I'd rank them. It's not that serious, like I said. So anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys found this entertaining. Um, I might do another comment video because I don't feel like I help people with their purchases too much. This is mostly just me rambling, but isn't that kind of what I'm known for anyway? But anyway, I, I, I hope you like this. I love these comments. I love engaging with you guys. I really appreciate that you guys leave these kind of comments and that you you know, are just so vocal and so supportive of my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. I know without you guys, I would not have a YouTube channel. So as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time to watch. If you want to become a member and get your comment prioritized, you can do that below. We have like, I think it's the cheapest settings we can have for memberships and Google takes half of that anyway, but it's just a way of filtering it down because as we get into winter, it becomes harder and harder to address your questions. I get so many comments that I really try to prioritize replying to members, um, you know, just logistically and as a way of slightly keep the lights on at night. But more than anything, just thanks for being here. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. I will have links down below to all the best deals I've found right now. Utah Skis has some tremendous demo ski sales, so check that out if you're in the market for skis. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.